Uh, okay. Let's have a look. Uh, I'm just going to go from the top to the bottom, honestly. Say what I think about everything and, and the implication, I think, for, for PvP. I'll, I'll, you know what I'm going to do as well? Where is it? I'll do this quickly now for anyone that missed it. So I'm only going to do one rogue spec because everyone's just playing Asa with sub anyway. So this is kind of where we're at at the moment. Warrior is high because this is like a... Like most people are doing Blood Moon and BGs right now, right? So there's a lot of group combat. The reason Warriors are high is because they absorb a lot of damage. They have a lot of mobility. They have a lot of CC with the stuns. They can get around quickly. Um, and they can interrupt, stop casts. They can get out again without dying. They can put up Mortal Strike. So their utility is really high. On top of that, they have Commanding Shout. Which gives a lot of health to the whole team. So yeah, Warrior is high B. Warrior Rets and Bs. Pretty much same logic as Warrior. Just they're tankier due to bubble. Hodge. They have general more kill potential than Warrior does. Enhance is probably a bit higher than BM. But generally Enhance lacks mobility. But they're very tanky and they do good damage. So I think I'm going to put it like that. That's that's kind of how we were, where we're thinking things are at the moment. Destro if left to cast has, has got again good damage. Fire Mage can do a lot of good instant damage. Uh, just AoE with Living Bomb, Living Flame, these kind of things. And if they can cast, they could do good single target too. What's the second S tier spec, Boomy? So yeah, this is kind of where the tier list was before. Uh, so this is the changes. So literally, I made a tier list and then later in the day, they did changes. So unlucky, I'm going to have to do a new tier list. Uh, but Life Bloom mana cost reduced by 50%. Life Bloom refunds half of its new mana base uh, when it expires. Or well. This is pretty big. Going to be interesting to see how, like, whether or not Life Bloom healing can actually keep up with the damage in the current meta. You might see more Rested Rids now rather than just straight up Moonkins with Wild Growth. Um, but I don't know if Life Bloom actually heals enough yet. I don't know if there's enough plus healing enough in the game yet for Life Bloom to to keep people alive. We'll have to see. Maybe it's maybe it's good. If it, if Life Bloom can actually keep people up then uh, this is going to be really efficient healing for druids and, you know, arguably they're going to be decent. Life Bloom heals for 64 per tick at three stacks. Yeah, it's not a lot. It's not a lot. This is what I mean, right? Like, I don't know if Life Bloom is going to be enough. Maybe Life Bloom with Rejuve and Wild Growth is, like, going to be a lot of healing. But, yeah, Blooms on their own aren't going to save anyone, right? And you lose Star Surge. Yeah, that's that's awkward. So this, I think, looks more appealing than it actually is. Uh, Living Seed now heals for 50% of the critical heal that planted the seed was 30%. The heal now blooms from non-periodic healing received in addition to any damage taken. That's just freaking weird, man. I don't, I don't even know what that means, honestly. So it's kind of like a POM. It's like a... So like basically, when you crit heal, it puts a seed. And when they take damage or get healed, it pops the seed. But you don't have that much crit, so it's kind of like Monkas. Nourish mana re cost reduced by 27%. That's decent, but obviously you have to cast. It's their flash heal equivalent. Casting is still rough, um, but I mean, it's not the worst change. What are what, what other runes are on Nourish? Berserk, Eclipse, Nourish. So you'll, you'll be taking Nourish if you're healing, I guess. If you're playing Boomy, then you want Eclipse. Increases the crit effect chance of your regrowth spell by 10%. So like, if you want to get a living seed, you press regrowth, right? For sure. So regrowth might be decent if you go like full full resto spec with swift mend. I think we will see. I think with these changes, we will see more resto druids rather than just like balanced druids with living. Um, what's it? What's it face? The the AOE heal. I think druids probably still not as good as discs, but definitely moving up the ranks. Uh, I think they need more bonus healing overall to kind of get to that break point where their hots are a problem. Moonkins can now cast non-healing resto spells without cancelling their shapeshift. This includes remove curse, remove poison, abolish poison, innovate, rebuff, revive, mark of the world, gift of the world. Give that to shadow form. That'd be nice. I want fucking abolish disease from shadow form. But <sighs> to be honest, I shouldn't really be asking things on, on shadow right now. Shadow's in a great spot. Fury of Storm Rage improved when this rune makes healing touch instant. It now makes it castable in all shapeshift forms. Wow, so, I mean, you can just play straight out Moonkin now, then a what? And then just, like, send out some healing touches. The issue with this is, um, it's it still costs a lot of mana, right? So Moonkins are going to go oom. Like, the, the proc doesn't make the healing touch free, it just makes it instant. So, overall, quite interesting changes for Druids. They reduced Moonfire mana usage. 
Wait, where's that? Is that not documented on here or what? Or is that elsewhere? I skipped a line. Wait, which line did I skip? Oh, here we go. Moon can form now also reduces mana cost of moon fire and increases moon fire periodic damage by 50%. Some fire also benefits from this change. Wow. That's crazy. That's a really good change for Druid for PvE as well. So you want to be dispelling those dots now. That's really strong. I, I can't believe I missed that. That's nuts. That's probably the best change out of all of them. I, I mean, the insane thing is Druid was still S tier. Like right now. So like Moonkin is going to be really, really, really strong. But it's just not going to be played, I guess, in... I mean, what what do they, what can they take instead of uh, Wild Growth? Let me see. Not a lot, right? Oh, Sunfire. So they're going to be playing Sunfire more instead of Wild Growth, I'd say. Although Wild Growth is still really strong. So I, I don't know. I don't know if you're going to actually see them replacing that in, in group PvP or not. I think there's more value still coming from the wild growth button push. Overall, though, it is Moon Moonkin buffs, but it's more pure Moonkin. I think the main issue with Moonkin right now is like Eclipse is too good in that it makes too much, like too much benefits off the same stuff, right? So then what ends up happening is that Starfire is like fucking crazy and creating for like 1.8k and shit. And it's, okay. it's like, okay, yeah, you need to prep it a little bit with some casts. But I think that's the thing that's making Moonkin really, really strong right now. If they if they smoothen that out, this change would be, like, pretty nice. And it would make more, like, of an equal power over the kit, which would be cool. But overall, yeah, I mean, I don't think there's any objectively bad changes there. Like, the, 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 the areas that they're targeting are... I agree with, I think they're, they're good areas to target, right? They're buffing baseline spells... Um, to try to compete more with, with runes to a degree. Um, life bloom was kind of trash. I think it still doesn't heal for enough, but we'll see. Uh, Hunter dual wield specialization no longer grants a thirty percent damage bonus to Raptor Strike for wielding two weapons of the same type. So a big nerf for Raptor Strike. Paladin Crusader Strike now deals holy damage instead of physical damage, ignoring armor and is now affected by holy damage prevention. Crusader Strike is still considered a melee attack and not a spell. So, I mean, Rets can do even more damage then. That's kind of scary. Seal of Martyrdom can no longer trigger Art of War and will no longer be triggered by Frost Oil or other weapon procs. Um, so, small nerf there, I guess. But yeah, this is this is scary, man. Okay, Rogue. Redirect no longer triggers or is affected by the global cooldown. And its own cooldown has been reduced to 10 seconds. When Redirect is combined in a macro with other combo point related abilities it often does not function as expected we recommend not including in such macros right okay main gouch now generates three combo points on your target and base energy cost reduced to 15 so they basically buffed this is like the dot equivalent the, the dot equivalent of mutilate right so it's just gaining some dps i don't know if this is going to make it go ahead of mutilate or what but it's an option at least just a flesh wound threat bonus increased such that rogue tanks will Generate approximately 30% more threat. Okay. Nothing that really affects PvP there, I would say. Uh, Shaman. 200 Mastery Rune now also provides 10% increased attack power and 10% increased chance to hit with spells after hitting a target with 200 weapon. So just they just really want more 200 stuff going on, right? Shaman Rage now grants 5% of the Shaman's max mana per second instead of a value scaling from... Okay, so it's just cleaning it up, basically. I mean, that's fine. <laughs> Uh, Spirit of the Alpha Rune now grants the casting shaman 20% increased attack power if they cast spell on a target other than themselves. Wait, what does Spirit of the Alpha do? It's threat generation. So you just put it on someone always. So it's just 20% more attack power. Weird. I mean, that seems like a big buff. I mean, would why would you ever not put this on someone? PvE chain? Yeah, but like, can't you put it on someone in PvP? Oh, Freedom Totem is the uh, the option. Ah, yeah, okay, I see. That's not a, not a terrible idea then to put it on that. Um... Smart thinking by whoever was designing Shaman. Um, I'm not sure about this one. Are people, I mean, I feel like people are still not going to use two-hand mastery, uh, two-handed weapons. Earth shield, this is the big one. Earth shield mana cost reduced by 67% and charges increased from three to nine. I wonder if you can dispel the whole stack in one go. Does anyone know? Because if not, that is gross as fuck. One dispel equals entire earth shield. Okay, it's fine then. That's fine. I mean, and it's still is most likely still going to be a good trade for the Sherman, I think. The base man healed. And that, so it's basically healing for 50% more. Has more charges. Costs one third of the mana. Like, that's a crazy buff. And on top of that, it's like got some dodgy anti-pushback. 
I think if they if they get Riptide and they have this, it's going to be uh, unreal. Power Surge Tooltip Revise Clarify Functionality. This rune periodically grants mana every five seconds, equal to 15% of the Shaman's Intellect. Some potential issues... Uh, sorry, timing issues that have sometimes made it give it less mana than intended have been fixed, okay? Ancestral Guidance cooldown reduced to one minute was two minutes. So that's the one where when you heal, you pump someone, right? Dude, we're not getting pushback protection of Shadow till next phase, man. Can I link it? Yeah, it's on the first page of Wowhead, man. I think overall, not bad, not bad change. I don't know how much this actually affects the tier list, you know? I think it I think it will bring Boomy above Shadow, probably. I mean, the enhanced stuff is kind of PvE, right? Like, this doesn't really matter in PvP. This is kind of a side change. This they won't use because of Freedom Totem. This is kind of nice, but I think Enhance is still going to use Way. This is nice for Ellie, but doesn't change that much. It's like a bit of mana, I guess. And then this is kind of whatever for Resto slash Ellie slash whatever the fuck uses this. Um, so I don't think this changes Shaman that much or Enhance that much. Rogue is PvE. Paladin is maybe going to gain a bit of burst like paladin might do this actually we'll have to see but i think i think rets might be quite quite scary like this is potentially going to hit really hard how do we get pushback protection next phase uh because we get 10 more points right so you go five here and you go two in this and then you can put two in this as well if you want or you go three in this um so yeah hunter i think is nerfed i think hunter is actually gonna do this i think you might see something like this happen next phase this is all, uh, this is predictions, by the way. This is isn't how I'll put it back to what I think it is at the moment before the changes. But yeah. and I think Resto Druid is coming up potentially on par with Disc Priest, maybe a little bit worse. But it, I don't have it on this tier list at the moment. Warrior probably going to go up with the armor nerf. Wait, what armor nerf? Oh, is that a PV? Yeah, there's we're, we're talking PVP. This isn't PV. You scared me, bro. I was like, oh my god, they nerfing armor. So this is what we're at at the moment so uh, it's weird like there's some specs in you love down here they haven't really seen much i, I think frost def desperately needs some pvp love boomy potentially up survival probably down ret probably up that's about it resto druid probably up um rogue irrelevant shaman mostly looks irrelevant uh other than the earth shield i think resto shamans might gain a bit do i think survival hunter is over bm and pv yeah the pet is too easy to kill for a five-man group that's like remotely coordinated and then once the pet is dead the bm hunter is kind of useless why do I think Ellie is so good? Um, if you get your stuff off, you just kill something, which is insane. Obviously, you're not going to get it off all the time. And the, the reason that they're not like SSS++++ plus 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 is because Flame Shock is only Flame, Flame Shock is only 20 yards, right? If Flame Shock was like 36 yards, it would be like this, right? So th this is the thing that's bringing it down a bit. They have insane utility. They're really tanky. They have off heals. Uh, they have good mobility due to the Ghost Wolf being able to kite away if they need to. Um, and yeah, the, you basically have to lock them down. Otherwise, they will just kill something. Like if a melee pushes in and doesn't go on the Ellie, that, that Ellie will kill the melee. Yeah, so this isn't only the STV event. This is STV event and BGs generally. Um, I'm leaving duels a little bit less out of mind for the tier list. Uh, because one, I haven't done that many duels, and two, I think that pe more people aren't doing duels at the, as much at the moment, right? They're spending more time doing BGs and Blood Moons, so I think that it's more useful to have a tier list that favors those. I think Ellie is good in STV, yeah. I think if you bring an Ellie along to STV, and you bring an, S an, an SP along, then it's really tricky for melee if they don't lock them both down, because whichever one they don't lock down, the other one will peel for them and kill that guy. Obviously, if you get overrun by multiple groups, it's, it's fucked regardless, right? But... I think if you're like playing front to back against another group, Ellie is is good. If you bring like a Moonkin and Ellie, a Shadow Priest, and then like a Warrior or a Rogue to like defend, and then uh, and then like a Disc Priest to heal, then you've got like the Shadow Priest off healing. You got the Ellie off healing. Uh, you have the Boomy technically off healing, and then the Disc Spot healing. As an example. And I think the Ellie fits really nicely into that. If Ellie can use Earth Shields. Instead of Way. It could be really scary. They could get a lot of. lot of. A uh, lot of casts off. Did you miss the tearless breakdown? Yes you did. I'm just going to feed my cat. And then we're going to do a couple more BGs. Get another beer. Have a chill. Put on some bangers. And yeah we'll do that for like an hour.